out of interest, which American Horror Story character did you accidentally dress up as? Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. I am currently working on finger waves and this is attempt number one. It didn't go quite as planned but we're working with it. So last week I did my beauty inventory with you so breaking down all the figures in terms of both value and quantity of my beauty collection. As we obviously discussed last week it is large and this is me going into my third year of being in beauty rehab. In addition to my no buy budget year that I'm doing for everything I do have some beauty specific things that I'm going to be doing this year as part of my 2020 makeup rehab and I thought I would share them with you. There are four points to my beauty rehab plans for this year. Point number one in my 2020 beauty rehab is that I will be continuing with my no-buy. So that probably doesn't even need said. This is my third year of my beauty no-buy, but I am also doing my no-buy budget year for the full year of 2020 across all categories basically not just beauty so that does of course extend to beauty as we are in my third year of my beauty no buy I will need some replacements through the year so I am allowed replacements under the same rules of my no buy that I went through as part of my 2020 no buy budget year intro video I am also going to be having the exception that when I go on holiday I can purchase things and I don't need to stick to my no buy I won't go too much into detail but basically I tend to shop better when I'm on holiday I make better choices I feel quite safe about that I feel like as well it also benefits me because it keeps my buying behaviours enclosed as something that I sort of do on holiday and it's kind of allowed me to not slip back into the habits of buying at home because I'm very much in the mindset that buying beauty products is just not something I actually do at home so that really works for me point four I am going to come back to that though so yeah point number one is basically my replacements only no buy will continue. Point number two is that I do again want to achieve reverse rouge. So the reverse rouge challenge is where you try and use up a thousand dollars worth of product in a year. Since starting my no buy in 2018 I used up four thousand and thirty five dollars and forty seven cents worth of beauty items so that was across skincare, hair care and makeup and then last year in 2019 I used up $3,816.93 worth of again beauty items across skincare, hair care and makeup. I didn't track quantities in the first year but last year I used up 217 products to add up to that. Because I went over 4000 in the first year and came just under it in the second year I'd quite like to hit it again this year so just over $4,000 worth of products so ideally I'm saying I'd like to hit reverse rouge four times. I don't want to get into a point where I'm being wasteful about things so if I don't fully achieve that like I'm not going to be absolutely heartbroken but I would like to try and hit $4,000 worth of products used up within one calendar year. Point number three is that I also want to be doing my declutter project this year. So what I'm doing and I will show you this a bit more in my beauty setup which is the next part of the video um, is that I've got my products in my bedroom and when I use a colour product which is generally eyeshadow, blush, highlighter, eyeliner, lip liner and lipstick, lip gloss I am going to put them into my box at the end of kind of every month or every six weeks however long I'm going to go through those items with you guys and declutter from them based on having used them recently and being able to see how they've worked for me or not worked for me. So what that means is that once I've used an item and it goes through that process, once I've decided to keep it, I've put that that box of items that have been used and kept is in the top of my wardrobe for this year. What that means is that at the end of the year, any items that I have that are not a category that I've fully worked through and taken back out of that box, anything then that is still out is something that I have not used within a year. What I then want to do at the end of this year is assess that. So if I get to the end of the year and say I've got 20 lipsticks still sitting in my vanity that I have not used within a calendar year, then what I'm saying is that what I have used within a year is the amount of stuff that I can use within a year. However, if I have decluttered 20 lipsticks through the year, then I can take those 20 that I've not used yet and keep them in my collection because I know that I do have the space to use another 20 lipsticks on top of what I've used in the year because I've made that space by decluttering. If I get to the end of the year and I have 20 lipsticks that I've not used but through the year I've only decluttered 5 lipsticks, I'm only allowed to take 5 lipsticks 
out of the 20 that have been unused or I can look at what's unused and if I decide I'd rather keep one of those colours I have to declutter something that I have used and have already decided to keep something that made it through that first declutter so I hope that makes sense which basically my plan is that at the end of the year the makeup that I've got is of a size in which I can use everything once within a year because at the moment I think although I'm going into my third year of my beauty no-buy and my beauty rehab behaviours my collection is just still too big, it's still too overwhelming, there is no way I'm getting the use out of everything. This system is not perfect because it is a case of using something once and then putting it aside so in terms of like eyeshadow palettes for example unless I do like a palette a week or something with one of them in which case I am going to use every shade in that palette. What I'm saying is that if I use two eyeshadows out of a 12 pan palette that palette has been used it will be assessed and it will be decided whether it's staying or going so it's not it's not absolutely perfect but basically it just can't be perfect at this point I have to work with what I've got and I have to make that and I have to make that work essentially I don't really have an option I can't magic the perfect collection out of thin air that is what we are working towards is a point where it is perfect and I can use literally every product as in including every shade and every eyeshadow palette within a year but we're not there so this is the steps to getting there. My last and final point in my beauty rehab plan for the year is that I would like to reduce my total inventory by $3,000. Going into the first year of my beauty no buy in 2018 my beauty collection was worth $28,952.17. In 2019 my collection was worth $29,168.91. And in 2020 my collection was worth $29,346.45. Now in 2018 I used up $4,035.47 worth of products and in 2019 I used up $3,816.93 worth of products. So basically I've used up $4,000 worth of products for the last two years. However, my inventory has actually increased in value every year and again if you want to see how that breaks down um, and what's worth what, I went through my beauty inventory in last week's video. So I will link that in the cards in case you've not seen that and you want to see how those figures break down. How has that been able to happen when I have been on a no-buy? Quite simply, A in 2018 what I did was I took inventory of the things that were on my dressing table and I had a lot of stuff that I hadn't used yet, hadn't unpacked so that still all needed to be added in and to be honest it's taken me the last two years to add that in. I was very overwhelmed just by the figures from what I had on my dressing table at the start of 2018 so I did kind of take my time and put off adding things in because I didn't, I wasn't comfortable seeing that inventory number go up so for a lot of that stuff I actually did own it going into 2018, I just didn't count it going into 2018. I am now at a point where I have everything counted in other than my beauty advent calendar which I need to open and I think I'm going to make a project of that one month and do a video every single day of me opening it and adding the things in so that will be a thing. Basically going into 2020 everything except that advent calendar worth of products has been counted in. So I am hoping next year or I'm planning next year at the moment my inventory is basically $29,500 I want to be entering next year with my inventory at $26,500. So that's a $3,000 reduction. I'm not saying that that has to be $1,000 less of makeup, $1,000 less of skincare and $1,000 less of hair care because my 2020 hair care inventory, for example, um, the opening value is $1,985.88. So I'm not going to half that within a year. In 2018, I used up $513.64 worth of hair care and last year I used up less, I used up $301.69 worth of hair care. So I know that I'm not going to reduce hair care by $1,000 on its own, but I would like my total inventory to be reduced by $3,000. Now in terms of reducing the inventory, I can reduce it by using stuff up, which is obviously the main way I'd like to reduce it, um, and that also then ties into my reverse rouge challenge, or I can reduce it by decluttering items, which obviously ties into point number three which is decluttering. However, in addition to the things that I hadn't counted into my inventory in 2018 and 2019 that still needed added in, last year I asked for quite a lot of beauty gifts for birthdays and Christmases which is 
acceptable. Um, and I also bought beauty stuff when I was on holiday, which again is acceptable under the rules of my no buy. However, what that means is that the things that I decluttered or used up last year were cancelled out by the volume of stuff that I brought in. What that goal is going to force me to do is to consider what I buy under the rules of my no buy. And not just what I buy, but any gifts that I get, they will push my inventory up. So it means before I go to New York in November, which I'm still hoping that we get to New York in November. Obviously, we don't really know with this coronavirus situation what travel opportunities are going to be there. I've accepted I'm probably not going to Florence this summer, so sadly, but from a from a no-buy point of view, I was probably not going to have a lot of budget for Florence anyway because I wasn't going to have used up very much before I went to Florence. Um, whereas it's a bit more impactful by November because before I go on holiday, it forces me to assess what my budget is to actually shop with rather than just going on holiday and being able to say well I can buy whatever I want when I'm on holiday. It's essentially what that is going to make me do is look at my inventory versus where it was at the start of the year and see how much I have reduced it by and if I've not reduced it by enough by the time I'm going on holiday to have met my goal then it then means I can't buy beauty stuff on holiday and I'm forcing that restriction on myself whereas in the past I've looked at what I've been using up and then felt really good about the amount that I've used up so I've used up basically four thousand dollars of stuff for the past two years that has kind of excused me from feeling any guilt about buying things on holiday and it's it's fine as I say I, I do think generally on holiday I make good decisions but it means my overall inventory has still gone up even though I've been on an buy for two full years going into my third year. The overall goal is to work down. So that for me, setting that goal is a way of saying yes I've still got these exceptions to my no buy, I can still receive gifts, I can still buy things when I'm on holiday and I can still obviously buy replacements but it enforces me to limit what I'm bringing in because what I'm pushing out has to not only cancel out what I'm bringing in but has to over cancel it out if that makes sense. Those are my four points for my 2020 beauty rehab plans. In the context of that I'm now going to go into my beauty setup and share that with you. It's not fancy, it's not most aesthetically pleasing. People have asked to see my beauty setup in particular because I've set it up to do this decluttering project. It's it's not aesthetic, it's not ideal, it's, it's not brilliant, it's not how I want it to be in the long term but this is it is what it is for this year as well as the setup for my declutter project I have also tried to only keep down the things that I'm going to attempt to finish up within a year and I've put other things in the loft so that they are stored and I can go and get them as I work through a product. I'm standing in my room just now looking around and you guys will see in the setup part of the video that I'm still surrounded by beauty products there's still far more of my space than I'm happy to be giving to beauty products currently being given to them so I, I still want to reduce that but having that other stuff in the loft I think is really good for my mental health because it just opens up a bit of space which I just think having a physical space and less clutter is good for your mental health or for my mental health at least obviously I can't speak for you but yeah so this is the the end of the bit with me in the video and let's get into my beauty setup. So I think what I'll do is kind of do this both by room and by category. So I'm going to start with makeup. Over here is where I keep some of my makeup. This is my dressing table. It's from Marks and Spencers. I think it's called the Hammond. I can't 100% remember um, but I will link it down below. It's got six drawers on it which was a large part of my thought process in buying it, um, was for the storage. I will give you all a good laugh and insert a picture of the dressing table that I would like to replace this with that has absolutely no storage at all. So we've got a lot of stuff to use if I'm ever going to get there. But yeah, so let's just get on into it. So first of all, the drawers actually don't have uh, any makeup-y stuff in it. The only one that sort of does is this drawer here. Um, and this has got a bunch of false eyelashes for all the nights out that I don't go on and then I have uh, some nail polishes at the back here. I get my nails done regularly now actually so I'm kind of thinking probably a lot of these could go but they're generally all from collections as well like I've kind of I have decluttered away most of the nail varnishes that I didn't kind of want anymore um, and it's not a problematic category for me it's not something I spend a lot of money on. This section of stuff could use some attention but 
that is in that drawer there. So to start on this side, I've got my Muji drawers. Um, so these used to cover this whole table with just a little bit of space that palettes were on. Um, so I much prefer this setup and I'm kind of trying to use preferring this setup as motivation to work towards not ever having the amount of stuff that I used to have that would cover this whole space. So the makeup kind of starts in this third drawer here. So this is basically sort of primers, so lip balms mainly, lip primer things. Um, but I've also got an eyebrow primer from, or an eyebrow conditioner from Benefit and Benefit Puff Off Under Eye. I'm going to try and not turn this into what would I buy again and whatever, but ideally I would basically like to get these drawers down to just having... I, I like this NARS one as well actually, but these Clarins Lip Perfectors are sort of my favourite lip balms, um, although as, as far as the sticks go, I like the NARS one and I do like the fresh one, um, but I would kind of like to just get this drawer down to basically just those products really. Then next I've got, these are the primers that I'm aiming to either use up this year or that I wanted to keep access to this year. Face primers here, eye primers here. Then the next one down has foundations and concealers and connectors that I'm trying to use up this year. On the top here as well I've got a couple of items that either didn't fit in the drawers or are on top for other reasons. Um, so I've got this skin illuminator which is kind of a primer slash liquid highlighter um, from number seven which I've cut open so that's why that's in the top. I've also got this L'Oreal Infallible which is nearly done but when I have it lying flat in the drawer it's very difficult to get the end out and um, so it's standing up so that I can get better access to it. Um, and then I've also got my Armani Crema Nuda which is a huge pot so that sits in the top because it doesn't fit in. and a makeup forever a powder which again doesn't fit in the drawer. These are makeup products. Smashbox primer water. I don't really use that as a primer. What I quite like that for actually is if I've got an eyeshadow that I want to make a kind of wet look eyeshadow with I find that that's quite good for that. And then my L'Oreal um, setting spray. So I've used the MAC one and the Urban Decay one. They both broke me out and this one doesn't. Next one here are powders. I've got one bronzer here, the NARS Seaside bronzer. So that's the only bronzer I think I own that's not in a palette. Um, so I've just kept it there and then I've got two contour products. So I've just kept them in with my sort of core makeup here because they're not colour products that I own a lot of so it's fine I'm not trying to work through them. Then next drawer down, two of my project pan items are in this palette so that has to kind of stay in easy access and then I've also got brow stuff that I'm sort of trying to work through as well. Actually on the topic of project pan, this second drawer here actually I forgot has mainly an eye drawer in case you can't tell, that was the kind of start of it, but I do have my Project Pan lipstick, eyeliner and then these three steel lip glazes that I'm just trying to actually finish this year, so again keeping them in my core rather than in the stuff that I'm moving through. And then to go back down to finish off my core makeup, my mascaras, so I have five coloured mascaras, um, which I'm obviously not expecting to finish all of them within a year, uh, one mascara primer and then I have five normal mascaras to try and work through this year. That is my core makeup that I'm keeping on my dressing table. Then on to colour products. So this side here is my eye colour products. So if you can see over here, these are actually face palettes. Then I have my Urban Decay palette which is there so that this can sit on top of it and be a bit more easily accessible. Um, generally this is not accessible at all. Basically I am about the same height as these drawers so like reaching up there is quite difficult for me but I have to work with it. Um, my Blair Waldorf Funko Pop lives there because why not so um, face palettes, eye palettes over here you guys can see I can't even see what you're looking at but um, that box has my eyeshadow palettes, my large palettes of six or more colours in it. This box here or basket here is my eyeshadow singles and um, this box is my sort of duos through to my quince. Um, eyeliners in this jar, eyeshadow crayons in this jar, um, eyeliners in this jar and then this palette's just at the front because it's what I'm going to use next. So that is my eyeshadow setup. And then I have the same drawers on the other side of the room again, these are from M&S. And the top of this is my blushes, highlighters and lip products. I'll move this out the way, we'll, we'll build up then build back in. So on this side, the bottom two boxes, this one is blush um, and this one is kind of excess lip products that didn't fit in the, the main lip product thing. 
Then the next sort of layer of this setup is that in this box here, um, I've got highlighters and then some blush palettes at the back that didn't fit in this box. Um, and then this is actually from Ikea that I have put my lipsticks into. This then sits on top of that and this has got my liquid lipsticks in it. I've then also got this little pouch and this has got my lip liners in it. And then lastly, this Space NK bag has my lip glosses in it. So those are my colour products for cheeks and lips that have still to be used this year. Once I have used makeup, it comes over here and it goes into this box or in case of this palette which doesn't fit in the box, it's sitting on top of the box. This is then what my next declutter video comes from, is when I go through the contents of this and that's everything then that I have worn from these colour products in the last however long. So there's probably one coming up quite soon actually because I think there's about a month's worth of stuff in there. So once I've used it once, it goes in here so that it can be considered for decluttering at the end of the month. This is product empties that's in this box here as well. So again, I actually think there'll be an empties video probably following this video for the kind of from the start of the year through to now. So that's my empties box, but keep kind of focus on makeup. Once I have decluttered the makeup, if you guys can see that box there in the top of my wardrobe, um, once I have decided to keep the makeup, it is going in there so that I can continue to work through what is kind of either in my core selection or in the colour selection that's not been used yet. Um, or obviously if it gets decluttered, it gets put aside and passed on to whoever um, I'm kind of passing it on to or if it's going in the bin if it's expired. So um, that is where the stuff that I've decided to keep but have used this year goes so that it's out of the way and and I can continue to use the colour products that I haven't used yet. As you can maybe see, my dressing table is against the wall, so I don't actually tend to sit and get ready at it. So not having the products all in my dressing table isn't a huge problem, but these are actually outside of my room right now, which is not to everyone's delight. So I've got three mugs worth of brushes there, two there, and another one there and then these are some colour pop boxes that I really want to keep but I don't quite know what I'm doing with them yet. I think I am going to do a makeup brush declutter quite soon because I've definitely got far too many but that is where my tools are living. Following on from makeup to skincare, that brings us back over here. So over here I have basically got my kind of everyday skincare. So the moisturiser that I've got on it, uh, that I'm using at the moment, um, the eye cream that I'm using, that's my daily facial oil which I will actually put away. Um, again these don't actually fit in these drawers so I was hoping that the kind of top two of these would basically be my skincare. So these are the eye products that I'm using this year or like eye masks that I'm hoping to use up this year. Um, plus basically my sort of daytime and nighttime skincare routine as they currently stand up. I've basically finished all my serums so I've actually just ordered some more which I'm waiting on coming. But yeah, I'm trying to get my kind of skincare routine down to the point where it's not taking up much space and can kind of be compacted down. And then here I've got some products that I didn't think were worth kind of putting into non-accessible storage because I think I'll move on to them quite quickly but maybe just like the next night cream that I'm going to use. Uh, my SPF is sitting here, another moisturiser that I want to use, um, facial spray, things that just didn't really fit in here but I kind of want them to hand. Then over on this side I have got this little thing at the back here which is, I got this in TK Maxx um, and it's just like a little thing that's sort of sectioned into four sections um, and I put my sashi samples in there which I'm going to really try and work through a bit this year. Then in front of that I've got some face masks that again don't fit into these. Basically this is my sort of treatment skincare that I'm keeping in this side so not my everyday but stuff I do want access to regularly. Um, so face masks, these don't all fit in very happily but they go eventually. Um, more face masks and some peel products. Then this one is sort of treatments, so uh, these lot, these three are spot treatments. Um, this is a sizzly detoxing treatment thing, um, and this is quite good when my eczema flares up. And then underneath that, I've got the Cosrx 
um, blemish spot sticker things. Uh, the next one, actually this is makeup, but this is my Guerlain lipsticks, so I've not used the other the other lipstick <laughs> refill yet, it's actually over. You'll have seen it over in the, the black thing over there, but I just, I want to keep these in their boxes because I want to keep them good. They're living there once they've been used rather than getting put into storage because I'm still quite, they're still just sort of my favourite thing. I also quite like keeping them there because I really just love how sort of special and glamorous it feels having these and I think it, the way I feel about these is how I want to feel about everything that I hold on to so I think having that reminder there of being like this is like top tier of how I want my makeup and my possessions in general to make me feel and um, having that just on hand I think is quite just just good mentally to keep in mind. The next one is feet products so I think I'm actually just about to finish this one and um, so again stuff that I'm hoping to finish this year and then I've got an empty one here. Then at the side here, this is not that relevant, but how cute is it? Shaq and Gus Gus from Cinderella. And then I've got a hand mask here. Then I've got some Disney pins that I need to actually put with my other pins, but they're so pretty, but I just, ugh, I need to stop buying pins. Well, I have stopped buying pins. I've stopped buying everything, but yeah, pins were a problem. Um, and then I've also got this foot mask, so they are sitting there because I'm planning to use them tonight. Uh, and behind that I've got uh, a box of Chanel number no. 5. I don't really have anywhere to store perfume at the moment, so I've also got perfumes... Oh, Christ, that's heavy. Um, here, just kind of sitting on top. And more perfumes under here as well. Yeah, I kind of need more perfume storage, but yeah, it is what it is. Last year my perfume was... Um, up on top of those drawers there but I kind of decided I valued this space and I wanted this space to open up which is why I moved stuff from here over there but the perfumes don't really fit over there now. I think I'll finish showing you what is in my bedroom then move on to the backup stuff elsewhere and um, so my windowsill is basically completely taken over by beauty stuff. Again, I suppose it's just a way of being like visually look how much space this is taking up and this is what we want to work away from. So over here, and before anyone shouts at me, these are biodegradable wipes. So so this first box here is kind of all mainly shampoos, conditioners and things that I would use on wet hair. So shampoos and conditioners that I want to work through this year. Um, things like hair masks, then um, like hair oils, uh, heat protectant sprays, blow dry sprays, serums, things like that that I want to try and work through this year. Um, trying to keep it consistent, let's ignore this box and move here. So this has got sort of styling products in, so there are some more blow dry products that didn't fit in the other box, so um, serums, heat protectant, mousse, but then I've also got dry shampoos here as well and like styling, these are both the Orbe um, restyling spray for dry hair. I'm trying to make this more about the setup than products, but but I really really enjoy this. If there's one thing I would really recommend, um, this is like a heat protectant, but it's for dry hair and it doesn't weigh your hair down. I try not to wash my hair very often, so. I kind of wash my hair about once a week, sometimes once every 10 days, but I might be styling my hair and between that time and a lot of my other heat protecting products um, are designed to be sprayed onto wet hair. This is one of the few that isn't, so I really, really like that. This doesn't usually live here. Um, this is in my project pan, but it's usually in my drawer at work. But as we're sent home from work during coronavirus, it's it's kind of just ended up there. And then this is a little styling box, so texture sprays, hairspray, uh, glitter products as well that I never use but I'm not quite ready to admit that I don't use them and just pass them on. I'm holding on to the idea that I might use them at some point. That then takes us on to the empties box and the, the declutter box. Moving back, this is the body hair that I'm keeping in my bedroom. So generally the body hair that I'm using is in the bathroom, um, which is where I tend to use it but this is just stuff that I do want to try and get through this year so keeping it here keeping it in sight so that it doesn't go out of sight out of mind. I'm in the bathroom now so sorry if it's a bit echoey um, but in the bathroom I've got some more face masks um, and then some more these are the body products that I'm kind of using um, tend to sort of live here then I've also got some facial skincare products just like cleanser that's another hair mask um, 
makeup remover, things like that kind of live where I'm going to use them. And then in the shower I've got uh, body scrubs, two body scrubs, um, a body wash, that isn't mine, uh, a face wash, in shower treatment and shampoo and conditioner. Probably seems slightly basic showing you that but um, I used to have this shower absolutely stuffed um, and I was never finishing anything so I'm trying to really minimise what I've got in the shower at any point so that I'm just using one thing until it's done um, unless it's something that I'm specifically bringing in for a different reason. Up in the loft, first of all this is a bag of the best empties of the last two years. I had kind of been starting to keep it as my sort of, I've been on a no buy for what will now be three years at the end of this year for beauty. I finished God knows how many thousands of dollars worth of stuff um, and this is the stuff that really stood out so I'm still intending to do something with that so I do have this box of em or this bag of empties. Next to the box of empties um, there's some more of these Muji drawers that I when I started putting stuff up here I put these in first so these have actually ended up with nothing in them. Then here is powders that I am keeping but probably trying to use the ones that are downstairs up first. These are backup primer and uh, concealer products that again I'm trying to use what's downstairs first. And this one here has um, another primer actually and some foundations. Then next to that here in this little box I've got a, a bag of lip balms and my mascaras. That's a lot to come out. Then here we've got more eyebrow products and more base products and I actually need to take that downstairs because I have finished my little one. Satisfying moment. So this little shelf here is empties and then the backups of core makeup items that I might need to swap in easily as things get used up this year. Then building up in front of that I've got this box here which has shampoos and conditioners and body products that again I'm trying to focus on what's downstairs but they're in this box when I need them. And then I've got this box which is sitting on top of that one um, and that's got hair styling products that are backups. I've then got this first box here which is my backup of um, cleansers, toners and masks. And then sitting on top of that box, um, this is a little box with exfoliators and treatments in it so Hopefully the stuff in this box will move into this box as stuff gets worked through. Um, and then this little box here has got eye creams and moisturisers in it. So that is all the sort of backup stuff that is in storage and waiting to be used once other stuff has been finished. I had just finished filming and realised this little bag was on my bed. Um, it's usually kind of kicking about in this area and this is a bag that's got all my sheet masks in it. So I'll leave that there just now um, and I also kind of forgot to say in case anyone's wondering this is a sheet mask that I used last night and it is open I've used obviously the sheet and thrown it away um, but I'm keeping the there's a lot of essence left in it so that's why there's like an open sheet mask lying there and these are some um, temporary tattoos because why not but yeah just in case anyone was wondering um, and my sheet masks are now <laughs> there with the rest of my stuff. So that was my beauty setup. I hope you enjoyed seeing that and yeah this has been my 2020 beauty resolutions and beauty setup video. I realise it's April and I'm only just sharing this with you but I had planned these in advance and I have been living with these plans for a few months. I just hadn't got around to making a video and talking you guys through them and um, so they have been in place and I have been working to them. So now that we've done the setup and the inventory numbers for the opening of 2020. I do have a couple of empties videos. You've already seen one declutter video and I have another one coming very, very soon because my box is getting full. And yeah, I hope you will enjoy them when they come. Thank you very much for watching this one and I will speak to you in my next one. Bye.